to provide telehealth services at multiple hospitals. Members making telehealth uh, easier to use will cut healthcare costs, improve the quality of care, and increase access to underserved, especially rural communities. This bill is sponsored by the California State Rural Health Association and has strong bipartisan support in both houses, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Debate or discussion? Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? It is file item 113. Any objection? Seeing no objection, it is ayes 34, no 0. The bill is passed. Senator Lowenthal, your file item is? 92. File item 92. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1164 by Assemblymember Gordon and Act relating to transportation and making an appropriation therefore. Thank you, Mr. President. AB 1164 is a bill for retaining federal transportation funds and advancing state and local transportation projects. Each federal fiscal year, California allocates federal transportation funds known as our obligation authority to both state and local projects. But at the end of the year, if a project's uh, the end of a federal fiscal year, if we have not allocated funds, projects can be claimed by other states which have used all of their own obligation authority. It's therefore important for us to use all of our obligation authorities so that we do not lose these funds and then we can pursue the unused obligation authority of other states. That's what this bill does. And I ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? This is file item 92, members. Debate or discussion? Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Any objection to substituting the unanimous roll call on this item? There is no objection. Senator Lowenthal, it is ayes 34, noes 0. The bill is passed. Members, we are at file item 116 now. Senator DeSaulnier, are you prepared to take up file item 116? Forgive me. File item 116, Senator Saulnier will pass. Senator Kehoe, for what purpose do you rise? With your permission, I'd love to take up 115. Please. The Secretary will read. Thank you. <clears throat> Assembly Bill 1329 by Assembly Member Davis, an outcome to disease reporting and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Members, this bill streamlines the process uh, whereby the California Department of Public Health can continue to operate our statewide re and regional cancer registry. Uh, the registry uh, authority expires in June of 12. It's been operational for 30 years. It's a center for uh, database for cancer researchers in our state, and I certainly hope we want to continue it. Uh, it'll establish a competitive process to issue contracts, grants, and other allocations to agencies to operate the statewide Ken Maddie Cancer Registry. I ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Any objection to the use of our unanimous roll call on file item 115? Seeing and hearing none, it is ayes 34, no 0 on the urgency. Ayes 34, no 0 on the bill. The bill is passed. Members, we go now to file item 120. File item 120, please. Senator Lowenthal, are you prepared to take this up? You are. The Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 180 by Assemblymember Carter, an act relating to academic performance. Thank you, Mr. President and members. AB 180 allows the use of individual student growth model for specified dropout recovery schools. This accountability mechanism is important in dropout recovery schools because the students start far below grade level. Only a growth model demonstrates the value of an education that these students receive. This legislation and education researchers around the country, this legislature, and also education researchers around the country have recognized the importance of individual pupil growth models in future accountability models for all students. This measure has no opposition. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Just saying what's in the bill. I mean, what's... Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? This is file item 120. File item 120. Any objection to the unanimous roll call? 
If not, ayes 34, noes 0, the bill is passed. Senator Solne and Senator Corbett, could I ask you to talk about file item 116? Senator Solne, you are listed as the floor manager in the file. I believe Senator Corbett thinks that it's on her to-do list. We'd be happy to take it up with either one of you as a floor manager. Senator Corbett, thank you very much. We will go back to file item 116 and ask the secretary to read prior to Senator Corbett's introduction of the bill. Assembly Bill 681 by Assembly Member Wykowski and Ackling to above ground storage tanks. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, Assembly Bill 681 simply provides an extension to the state's authority to disperse monies from the Environmental Protection Trust Fund. This extension will allow local agencies to receive important training and local assistance funds in the Above Ground Petroleum Storage Act. This fund was established to support initial implementation of the above ground storage tank safety requirements. Approximately $1.8 million is available for local training and assistance to make sure these dangerous tanks are properly managed and regulated. However, the authority to spend these funds expired in July 2011, and this bill simply extends the disbursement deadline to June, two th June 1, 2013. Both industry and local environmental enforcement agencies, including the California Association of Environmental Health Administrators, are in support of this bill. I ask for your aye vote, and I do believe that there may be support on both sides of the aisle on this. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion. Is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Seeing and hearing none, it is ayes 34, noes 0, the bill is passed. Members, we move now to file item 123. Senator Price, are you prepared to take this item up? Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 396 by Assembly Member Mitchell and Ackerling to Medi-Cal. Mr. President, members. <clears throat> Today I'm presenting AB 396, which will require the State Department of Health, Health Care Services to develop a process to maximize federal financial participation for the health care services provided by counties and states to juveniles in custody who would otherwise be eligible for Medi-Cal. Many juniors, many minors, who are detained in local detention facilities and the Division of Juvenile Facilities within the Department of Corrections and Rehab will require medical care that requires hospitalization. Currently, the county and CDCR is burdened with the total cost of inpatient care of minors. AB 396 would allow counties and the CDCR to draw down federal matching funds to reimburse them for the medical treatment for minors who are outside the county detention facility or the Division of Juvenile Facilities for more than 24 hours and placed in patient facilities for the treatment and medical conditions. Amendments were taken to address the financial concerns of DHCS. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, members, any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call? Is there any objection? If not, and seeing and hearing none, ayes 34, no 0, the bill is passed. Members, let's go back to file item 121. Senator Keogh, you're prepared to take this item up. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 29 by Assembly Member John A. Perez and Ackling to Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, this bill creates the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, or GOBIS. Uh, it will assist businesses in integrating the Office of Small Business Advocate and the Business uh, Investment Services. It will establish long-term economic goals and strategies. Uh, and specific services for California businesses, emphasizing more job creation. Uh, it'll provide recommendations on uh, improvements to the permitting process and marketing California. Uh, this bill has received strong bipartisan support. It's supported by Labor and the California Chamber. And I ask for your aye vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, members, is there any objection to substituting our, there is objection, we will call the roll on this item. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist, aye. Anderson, no. no. Berryhill, Blakesley, Calderon, aye. Blakesley, aye. Berryhill, aye. Canella, aye. Corbett, aye. Correa, aye. aye. De Leon, aye. Desaigne, aye. aye. Dutton. Emerson, Evans, 
I. Fuller, I. Gaines, Hancock, Harmon, Hernandez, I. Huff, I. Kehoe, I. Lamalfa, No. Leno, Ted Lou, I. Carolou, I. Lowenthal, I. Negretta McLeod, I. Padilla, Pavley, I. Price, I. Rubio, I. Runner, I. Samidian, I. Steinberg, Strickland, I. Vargas, I. Walters, Wolk, I. Wright, Wyland, Yee, Yee I. Gaines, no. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Dutton, Emerson, I. Hancock, Harmon, Leno, Padilla, Steinberg, Walters, Wright, Wyland. Wyland, I. Call the absent members. Dutton, Hancock, Harmon, Padilla, Steinberg, Walters, Wright. Eyes 29, nose 3, the bill is passed. Senator Rubio, for what purpose do you rise, sir? To bring up file item 109. 109. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 894 by Assemblymember V. Manuel Perez and Acrolein to Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. President and Senators. An honor to bring up AB 894, known as the California Manufacturing Competitive uh, Act, uh, where we today want to create jobs in the state of California, members. It is a time where we need to uh, provide for a more competitive advantage so that we can secure federal funds. This bill, AB 894, establishes the framework to assist California manufacturers by offering direct loans as well as guarantees on loans and lines of credit. It is a bipartisan bill. Uh, that is sponsored by the California Labor Federation and the California Manufacturing and Technology Association. How many times does that happen? I would strongly urge that you support the California Manufacturing and Competitiveness Act, and thank you very much. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? It is file item 109. We would like a roll call. There is objection. A roll call will be ordered. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist, I. Anderson, Berryhill, I. Blakesley, I. Calderon, I. Canella, I. Corbett, I. Correa, I. De Leon, I. Desaigne, Dutton, Emerson, Evans, I. Fuller, I. Gaines, Hancock, Harmon, I. Hernandez, I. Huff, I. Kehoe, I. Lamalfa, I. Leno, Ted Lou, I. Carolou, I. Lowenthal, I. Negretta McLeod, I. Padilla, I. Pavley, I. Price, I. Rubio, I. Runner, Semidian, I. I. Steinberg, Strickland, I. Vargas, I. Walters, Wolk, I. Wright, Wyland, I. Yi, Yi I, Emerson I, Anderson No, Gaines No. Eyes 30, nose 2, the bill is passed. Members, again, we are back up to 36 members. That does mean that there are four votes missing. We'll try and take up bills where members think that they still have good reason to take up their measures. So I'm going to go next to Senator Hernandez, then Senator Huff, then Senator Strickland, in that order, then Senator Lowenthal, and then Senator Negrete McLeod, and that's as far as I can keep track. So if I could ask members to just hold that thought for a moment, please. Senator Hernandez, what file item? Yeah, I have uh, two, if you don't mind, Mr. President. I have file in number 52, AB 319, and file item 102, AB 1296. Let's begin with file item 52. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 319 by Assembly Member Norby and Ackerling to Alcoholic Beverages. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, AB 319 will end piecemeal legislation regarding 
allowing alcoholic beverages to be served on public community college campuses. Under current law, only two counties, Los Angeles and Alameda, are exempt from prohibitions. This bill will allow alcoholic beverages to be served and consumed at special events at community colleges statewide pursuant to license or permits. These events shall be held with the permission of the governing board of the community college district, and I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call? Any objection? Without objection, ayes 36, noes 0, the bill is passed. Thank you. And Senator Hernandez, I believe your next item is file item 102? Yes. The Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 1296 by Assembly Member Bonilla and Act Relating to Public Health. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, this bill, AB 1296, begins implementation of the Federal Affordable Care Act uh, No Wrong Door user-friendly, efficient application system that streamlines and simplifies eligibility, enrollment, and retention in state health subsidy programs. This bill ensures the application is available to apply by phone, in person, by mail, by fax, or online, or enrolling into Medi-Cal, Healthy Families, or the exchange. The author and sponsor have worked with the administration to ensure this bill is successful in implementing the ACA on time uh, to guarantee consumers are enrolling and beginning and benefiting from affordable health care programs. And with that, I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Debate or discussion? On this item, Senator Strickland. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, I rise in opposition to this measure. Uh, at a time when the state is really hurting for money and we're looking at the budget uh, process here in California, there's no reason to speed up the process in terms of implementation of the Obama health care plan. Um, this plan will be challenged in court. It's going through the courts right now. Uh, there's an election coming up in 2012. No one knows for sure if this is going to be implemented or not. So the state shouldn't be rushing to implement a plan that we're not even sure that will be uh, enforced. And so uh, at a time when we're looking at our budget, uh, this is one bill that should not move forward. I urge your no vote. Is there further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Hernandez, you may close. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist. Aye. Anderson. No. No. Berryhill. No. Blakesley. Calderon. Blakesley, no. Calderon, aye. Canella, no. Corbett, aye. Correa, De Leon, aye. aye. Desaigne, aye. aye. Dutton, Emerson, no. Evans, aye. Fuller, no. Gaines, no. Hancock, Harmon, no. no. Hernandez, aye. Huff, no. Kehoe, aye. aye. Lamalfa, no. Leno, Ted Lou. I Carolou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, Price, Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, No Semidian, I Steinberg, Strickland, No Vargas, I Walters, Wolk, I Wright, Wyland, No Ye, Ye I. Please call the absent members. Correa, Dutton, Hancock, Leno, Steinberg, Walters, Wright. Eyes 20, nose 13, Senator Hernandez moves a call. Members, we are now to Senator Huff, who wishes to take up file item 111. File item 111, the Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 520 by Assembly Member Amiano and Acrolane to Vehicles. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, AB 520 is actually an expansion of a bill I carried a couple of years ago, which passed out of here and out of the Assembly unanimously. But this bill will clarify that a person with a current wet and reckless violation who has a prior DUI is eligible to participate in the ignition interlock device program after having his or her license suspended for 90 days. Currently, this is offered to persons with a current DUI offense who have a prior DUI, even though a wet and reckless is a lesser offense. Four amendments requested by DMV and CHP address some technical cleanup. 
and include safeguards such as removal from the program for tampering with the IID device or failing to comply with other requirements. Simple bill that clarifies eligibility, has no opposition, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion on this item? Members, is there debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Berryhill? Blakesley? Aye. Berryhill, aye. Calderon? Aye. aye Canella? Aye. aye. Corbett? Aye. aye Correa? De Leon? Aye. Desaunier? Aye. aye. Dutton? Emerson? Aye. Evans? Aye. aye. Fuller? Aye. Gaines? Aye. aye. Hancock? Harmon? Aye. aye. Hernandez? Aye. aye. Huff? Aye. aye. Kehoe? Aye. aye. LaMalfa? Leno? Ted Lou? Aye. aye. Carol Lou? Aye. aye. Lowenthal? Aye. aye. Negretta McLeod? Aye. aye. Padilla? Aye. aye. Pavley? Aye. aye. Price? Aye. 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 Rubio? Aye. 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 Runner? I Semidian, I Steinberg, Strickland, no, no. Vargas, Aye. I Walters, Wolk, I Wright, Wyland, no, ye, ye I, Correa, no. Call the absent members. Dutton, Emerson, Hancock, Lamalfa. No. Leno. Steinberg. Walters. Wright. Ayes 29, noes 4. The bill is passed. Thank you, Senator Huff. We go now to Senator Strickland. Senator Strickland, what file item? 124. Thank you very much. File item 124, the Secretary will read. A semi bill 456 by semi member Wagner and accolade to mechanics liens. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Members, AB 456 clarifies provisions regarding appropriate notices for mechanic liens claims. Uh, this measure has received no no votes. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? No, no. Seeing and hearing none, members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Is there any objection? If not, and seeing none, ayes 34, noes 0, the bill is passed. Senator Strickland, was that your only item? It was. Then I believe our next member is Senator Gloria Negrete McLeod. Senator McLeod, what item? Oh, well, I have quite a few. Which do you want? Senator, as you know, we have a few members off the floor. Uh, I am, candidly speaking, members, I'm encouraging members to bring up the bills they have the votes for to help us clear the file. If you think you have the votes, please take I think I have the votes on All this right, one. All right, we'll see how good a counter you are, Senator. What is your first item? What is your first item, ma'am? Thank you, Mr. Uh, I'll read the, the bill. What Did is you? your first item number? Oh, I'm sorry, 104. File item 104. Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 1379 by Assembly Member Bradford and Ackerling to Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President and members. Uh, California communities represent a significant investment opportunity for institutional investors generating appropriate risk-adjusted return. The state, however, does not track investments made by the public pension funds and does not engage private investors on how to make the state a more attractive place to invest, especially in historically underserved capital markets, also known as emerging domestic markets. The solution is AB 1379 uh, mitigates these limitations by beginning to track fully diversified public pension funds by allowing public pension funds with assets of over $4 billion to annually report to the controller on their investments in California and in emerging domestic markets. Uh, AB 1379 is supported by the California Association of Local Economic Development, the Small Business Financial Development Corporation of Orange County. Hear that, everybody over there? 
Small Business of California, the Latino Business Chamber of Greater Los Angeles, Black Chamber of Co Commerce, and others. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Is there debate or discussion on file item 104? Could we have quiet in the chamber, please? Debate or discussion on file item 104? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist, Anderson, Berryhill, Blakesley, no, Calderon, Canella, Corbett, I, Correa, no, De Leon, Desaunier, I, Dutton, Emerson, Evans, I, Fuller, no, Gaines, Hancock, Harmon, Hernandez, Huff, I, Kehoe, LaMalfa, no, no, Leno, Ted Lou, I, Carol Lou, Lowenthal, Negretta McLeod, I, Padilla, I, Pavley, Price, I, Rubio, I, Runner, Smidian, I, Steinberg, Strickland, Vargas, Walters, Wolk, Wright, Wyland, Yi, Yi, I. Please call the absent members. Alquist, I, Anderson, no, Berryhill, no, Calderon, I, Canella, De Leon, I, Dutton, Emerson, I, Gaines, no, Hancock, I, Harmon, I, Hernandez, I, Kehoe, I, Leno, Carol Lou, I, Lowenthal, I, Pavley, I, Runner, I, Steinberg, Strickland, Vargas, I, Walters, Wolk, I, Wright, Wyland, Wyland, no, Canella, I, Strickland, no. Please call the absent members. Dutton, Leno, Steinberg, Walters, Wright. Ayes 26, noes 9, the bill is passed. Senator Negrete McLeod, do you have another file item you'd like to take up at this time? Well, I guess I'll ha I had to eat my words here. Uh, how about we take up... Um, I think this one's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this one's okay. Uh, 1320, which is item 114. File item 114. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1320 by Assembly Member Allen, an act going to public employees' retirement and making an appropriation therefore. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, AB 1320 will help stabilize public employer contributions to public employee retirement systems. It comes from a recommendation from the Little Hoover Commission to help stabilize pension systems. AB 1320 establishes a new taxpayer adverse risk prevention TARP accounts in both the public employees retirement law and the county employees retirement law of 1937, also known as the 37 Act. Given the current economic crisis, there is a clear need to minimize the impacts of employers when markets rise and fall, specifically to help mitigate the volatility in employer contributions. AB 1320 realigns the funding requirements to provide a more sensible relationship between employer contribution demands and the fiscal status of state and local budgets. 
The recent amendments taken on the floor were to move the text to a different location in the public employee's retirement law and to grant administrative authority to CalPERS to determine how money is transferred into and out of the fund and how to handle and disperse funds if the agency no longer contracts with CalPERS. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Is there debate or discussion? Is there debate or discussion on this side of members? If not, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist, aye. Anderson, no. Berryhill, no. Blakesley, Calderon, aye. Canella, no. Corbett, aye. Correa, De Leon, aye. Desaunier, aye. Dutton, Emerson, Evans, aye. Fuller, no. Gaines, Hancock, aye. Harmon, no. Hernandez. I Huff, no Kiho. I Lamafa, no Leno, Ted Lou, Carol Lou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, no Smidian, I Steinberg, Strickland, no Vargas, I Walters. Wolk, I, Wright, Wyland, no ye, ye I. Please call the absent members. Blakesley, no. Correa, Dutton, no. Emerson, no. Gaines, Leno, Ted Lou, I, Steinberg, Walters, Wright. Call the absent members. Correa, no. Gaines, Leno, Steinberg, Walters, Wright. Ayes 21, noes 14, the bill is passed. Senator Grenny McLeod, do you have another item you wish to take up? Well, I would, I would ask for your counsel. This next bill requires a two thirds vote. And it is file item? <laughs> it is file item 127, although it's very simple. It's a very simple vote. Senator, it's the presiding officer's judgment that you're on a roll and we should take up file item 127. Mr. Secretary, please read the bill. 1 file item 127. Uh, AB 89. Assembly Bill 89 by Assemblymember Hill and Ackling to County Employees Retirement and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, AB 89 was passed by this chamber on August the 30th to deal with local agencies obtaining waivers to circumvent federal pension calculation limitations. There is an indication from the governor's office and leadership that a comprehensive pension reform package will be worked on during the interim. As a result, the author has decided to move only the portion of the bill which provides San Mateo County with the statutory authority to implement in a memorandum of understanding. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Any objection to substituting the unanimous roll call? If there is no objection, and seeing and hearing none, it is eyes 35, no zero on the urgency, eyes 35, no zero on the bill. The bill is passed. Senator Negrete McLeod, do you have any other items you'd like to take up at this time? Uh, this one will be the last one because the other one is on the supplemental. Thank you. So, what is your file item, please? Uh, the file item is 48, AB 501, Campos. We are at file item 48. 501. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 501 by Assemblymember Campos and Ackling to Public School Employment. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members. AB 501 clarifies that all public school employees have the right to union representation under existing law. This bill stems from two flawed public employees relation board decisions that prevented the organization of certain types of school employees and prevented the organization of employees of a joint powers agency comprised of public school entities. Specifically, this bill clarifies the intention of Government Code Section 3540 that public school employees have a right to join 
representative organizations of their own choice. This bill would also clarify that any person employed by a JPA that is composed of one or more public school employers is a public school employee. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? Berryhill? No. Blakesley? No. Calderon? Aye. Aye. Canella? No. Corbett? Aye. Aye. Correa? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Aye. Desaunier? Aye. Aye. Dutton? No. Emerson? No. Evans? Aye. Aye. Fuller? No. Gaines? No. no. Hancock? Aye. Aye. Harmon? Hernandez? Aye. Huff? No. Kehoe? Aye. LaMalfa? Leno? Ted Lou? Aye. Carol Lou? Aye. Lowenthal? Aye. Aye. Negretta McLeod? Aye. Aye. Padilla? Aye. Pavley? Aye. Aye. Price? Aye. Aye. Rubio? Aye. Aye. Runner? No. no. Semidian? Aye. Aye. Steinberg? Strickland? No. Vargas? I Walters, Wolk. I Wright, Wyland. No, ye. Ye, I. Anderson, no. Call the absent members. Harmon, LaMalfa, Leno, Steinberg, Walters, Wright. Ayes 22, noes 12. The bill is passed. Senator Negrete McLeod, does that complete your items? Uh, are we doing anything? Nope. Not at the moment. Then Thank that's you. It for today. Thank you, Senator. Senator Lowenthal. Item 44. This is file item 44. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 41 by Assembly Member Hill and accolade to conflicts of interest. Thank you, Mr. President and Member. AB 41 adds the High Speed Rail Authority to the list of agencies bound by advanced disclosure requirements in the Political Reform Act. Under this bill, any High Speed Rail Authority board member, when confronted with an issue at a public meeting in which he or she has a financial interest, must, one, identify that interest, two, recuse him or herself from discussing or voting on the matter, and three, leave the room until the discussion and vote is concluded. These are the same requirements that other public bodies which manage public investments are subject to. Bodies such as the Public Utilities Commission, the Energy Commission, or the Planning Commission's boards of supervisors, city treasurers, etc. These are common sense changes that will ensure the, that the authority is conducting its charge in a fair and honest manner. There is no opposition to this measure. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Debate or discussion? Members, debate or discussion? Senator LaMalfa. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, I rise in strong support of this bill. Uh, so far, the high-speed rail project in California has been pretty much a fiscal disaster. Instead of uh, being real, it's been a bunch of phony numbers. And so instead of a, the tuxedo, they're trying to dress it up into, it reminds me a lot of the uh, spandex tuxedo T-shirt that Brian Wilson was wearing at the ESPY Awards in its reality. So. This is going to go a long ways towards helping put some kind of credibility back towards the high-speed rail, and I urge your eye vote. Is there further debate or discussion? Senator Lowenthal, you may close. Well, I'm not quite sure I understand everything that Senator LaMalfa has said. I do, I do thank him for his support, I agree with him. I think about the spandex as well as the high-speed rail. I urge your eye vote. Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Once again, any objection to substituting the unanimous roll call on this item? If not, and seeing and hearing no objection, ayes 36, no zero, the bill is passed. Senator Lowenthal, anything else? Thank you very much. We're going to go to Senator Correa, and then to Senator Hancock, and then to Senator De Leon. In that order, please. Senator Correa, what item? Item to take up item number 60 and item 61. File item 60. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, one AB. One moment, please. The Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 54 by Assembly Member Solario and Ackling to Drinking Water. Uh, 
Mr. President, Senators, item number 60, AB 54, will facilitate state and local funding for clean water projects and level a playing field between public water agencies and mutual water companies. I ask for an I vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Without objection, it is so ordered. Ayes 36, no zero, the bill is passed. Senator Correa, I believe your next item is file item 61? That's correct. Secretary, please read. A semi bill 1024 by Assembly Member Hueso and Acklington Insurance. Mr. President, Senators, AB 1024 will expand access to California's low cost auto insurance program by authorizing insurance agents and brokers to sell low cost auto insurance through the internet website and to sell the insurance from a list of nearby agents as specified in the bill. The author has worked with all stakeholders and has removed all opposition to this measure, I ask for an I vote. Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Is there any objection to the unanimous roll call? There is objection. The roll will be called. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? No. Berryhill? Aye. Blakesley? Aye. Calderon? Aye. Canella? Aye. Corbett? Aye. Correa? Aye. De Leon? Aye. Desaunier? I Dutton, Emerson, <laughs> Evans, I Fuller, I Gaines, I Hancock, I Herman, Hernandez, I Huff, No, Kehoe, I Lamalfa, No, Leno, Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, I Semidian, I Steinberg, Strickland, I Vargas, I Walters, Wolk, I Wright, Wyland, I Yi, Yi I, Emerson I. Please call the absent members. Dutton, I, Harmon. Leno, Steinberg, Walters, Wright. Ayes 32, noes 3, the bill is passed. Senator Hancock, is it file item 119, Senator? File item 119, yes. Yeah. Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 1330 by Assembly Member Furutani and Ackling to graduation requirements. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, members. Uh, AB 1330 gives high school students the option of completing a career technical education course as fulfilling a high school graduation requirement. Uh, the classes, the CTE classes, must be aligned to the model curriculum, standards, and framework adopted by the State Board of Education. The intent of the bill is to prepare students for the workforce and increase high school graduation rates which is an ever-pressing issue given our high school dropout crisis and research that indicates lack of engagement in education is a problem for many of those students who drop out and that career technical education classes can keep them engaged in learning and staying in school. Uh, many of these classes are very rigorous. Career technical classes of today include courses like energy and environmental technology, architectural instructional engineering, and media and design arts. Uh, AB 1330 has received bipartisan support, has a diverse list of support, such as the superintendent of education, Tom Torlakson, administrators, labor, and manufacturers. It received no-no votes in the assembly and bipartisan support in the Senate so far. I would ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Senator Wyland. Thank you, um, Mr. President, members. We've talked a lot in here about the horrible effects of high school dropouts, the horribly negative effect it has not just in our economy, but on the students and young people involved. The reality is that every other modern developed 
society offers alternatives to purely academic education, this is something that will uh, be highly sought after by many, many, many students and is a great benefit which ultimately, if we spread it broadly enough, will drop and reduce the uh, high school dropout rate. Urge your eye vote. Is there further debate or discussion? Senator Hancock, you may close. I should, I should um, also thank Senator Wyland, who is a co-author of the bill. Um, I would ask for your I vote, members. Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this bill? Any objection to substituting the unanimous roll call on this bill? If not, and I see none, it is eyes 37, noes 0, the bill is passed. Members, we go now to Senator DeLeon if he is prepared to take up his item. Senator DeLeon? What I thank, observe. Thank you, Mr. President. I have two file items, file item number 94 as well as file item number 96. We'll go to file item 94. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 86 by Assemblymember Mendoza and Ackling to Charter Schools. Thank you, Mr. President, as well as members. I'm here to present AB 86, a bill that will create a voice for classified employees and entitle them to a seat at the table when charter schools are being established. AB 86 requires permanent classified employees estimated to work at a charter school to participate in the petition process when starting a new charter school or when an existing public school is being converted into a charter school. Classified employees play a very important role in our education system by assisting with special education classes as well as English language learners. Oftentimes these, come, these uh, men and women come from the very same communities where they work. I would like to uh, uh, underscore that it is clear that the creation of charter schools will impact classified employees and it's important that they have a voice. This is a measure that enjoys a wide range of support. Uh, it is uh, supported by the California Charter Schools Association, the California School Employees Association, as well as the California Labor, uh, Federation of Labor, and believe it or not, AXA, the Association of California School Administrators. It's a wide a range of support. Mr. President, as well as members, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Debate or discussion on this item, Senator LaMalfa. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise in strong opposition to this bill. Charter schools are an important tool and alternative for parents to have some choice in California about their kids' education. What we're going to see here is a rush by folks that really shouldn't be making the decision on deciding uh, a charter school in California to, uh, to block them. It's already difficult enough to get it through with uh, the process that we have. I think that uh, with with the, the situation education is in California being dominated by interests that uh, don't necessarily get those same results in the classroom we seek, this further puts public education in peril. Charter schools need to be an open option for all parents and the school boards to have on the table. Now, the type of personnel we're talking about, they're freely available to attend the meetings and, and show up at the public hearings about the charter. I don't believe they should have the sign off on it because they are ultimately at will employees of the district. So this is another power grab. I urge a no vote. Debate or discussion? Is there any debate or discussion on this item, members? If not, Senator De, De Leon, you may close. Mr. President, as well as members, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? No. Berryhill? No. Blakesley? No. Calderon? Aye. Canella? Corbett? Aye. Aye. Correa? De Leon? Aye. Aye. Desaigne? Aye. Aye. Dutton? No. Emerson? No. Evans? Aye. Fuller? No. No. Gaines? No. Hancock? Aye. Aye. Herman? No. Hernandez? I Huff, no Kehoe, I Lamalfa, Leno, Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, 
Aye, Pavley. Aye. Aye, Price. Aye. Aye, Rubio. Aye, Aye Runner. No, no Semidian. Steinberg. Strickland. No, no Vargas. Aye. Aye, Walters. Wolk. Aye, Aye Wright. Wyland. No, Yee. Ye I. Call the absent members. Canella. No. Correa. Lamalfa. No. Leno. Semidian. Steinberg. Walters. Wright. Eyes 20, nose 14. Senator De Leon moves the call. call. You have one other item, Senator De Leon? Yes, uh, Mr. President. Uh, file item number 96. File item 96. Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 622 by Assembly Member Dickinson, an act relating to grand juries. Thank you, Mr. President, as well as members. Uh, AB 622 by Assembly Member Roger Dickinson is a very modest yet very important measure that deals with civil grand juries. Uh, this is a measure that will allow witnesses who testify under oath before a civil grand jury permission to actually have their legal counsel present during, these sworn during their sworn testimony. It requires that when a witness is called to give testimony under oath, the witnesses may have counsel present during that testimony. This is a provision that will sunset in five years and end in 2017 unless extended by later legislation. There is no cost to this bill and there is no reimbursable mandate. Uh, Colleagues on both sides of the aisle, believe it or not, when it comes to the civil grand jury, if in fact you are subpoenaed, you are not allowed to have any counsel with you during the, coast, during the, the uh, process of testimony. Uh, this is a measure that opens up the process so you can have counsel with you present. Again, it is a modest measure, yet nonetheless, it is a very, very important measure when it comes to the legal process. Mr. President, as well as members, I respectfully ask for a bipartisan support of this measure. Debate or discussion on the item, members? Seeing and hearing none, the Secretary will call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? No. Berryhill? Blakesley? No. Calderon? Aye. Canella? No. Corbett? Aye. Correa? De Leon? Aye. Aye. Desaunier? Aye. Aye. Dutton? No. Emerson? No. Evans? I Fuller, no, no Gaines, no, no Hancock, aye. I Harmon, no. no Hernandez, I Huff, no Kehoe, I Lamalfa, no Leno, Ted Lou, no Carol Lou, I Lonthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio. I Runner, no Semidian, I Steinberg, Strickland, no Vargas, I Walters, Wolk, Wright, Wyland, no Yi, Correa, no. All the absent members. Berryhill, no. Leno, Steinberg, Walters. Walk, right, ye. Rubio, I to no. I 17, no 17. Let's Senator move the call. De Leon moves a call. Members, we're going to go now to file item 125. Senator Ted Lou, are you prepared to take this item up? File item 125. Senator Liu, you're prepared to take this item up, and the Secretary will please read. Assembly Bill 1084 by Assembly Member Davis, an accolade to veterans, making an appropriation therefore, and declaring the urge thereof to take effect immediately. Thank you, Mr. President, Senators. This bill will amend the existing CalVet home loan program to allow CalVet to be used to finance a purchase of a shared equity cooperative. This bill is a technical fix to a measure that was passed a couple of years ago that will allow for California Department of Veterans Affairs to finance cooperative housing projects along with its more traditional single family home loans. It's got bipartisan support. We spoke through Quest Nivo. Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, is there any objection to the substitution of our unanimous roll call? A any objection to the use of our unanimous roll call? If not, 
Ayes 37, no zero on the urgency. Ayes 37, no zero on the bill. The bill is passed. File item 126, Senator Leno not at his desk. File item 130, Senator Saulnier, are you prepared to take up file item 130? File item 130, we're passing. Thank you. We'll come back to you, sir. File item 131, Senator De Leon. File item 131. We will take up file item 131. I am aware that Senator Lowenthal and Senator Blakesley are waiting patiently. Thank you. Senator De Leon, file item 131, Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 981 by Assembly Member Hueso and Ackling to the Capital Access Loan Program. Thank you, Mr. President, as well as members. Uh, AB 981 will help expand access to small business loans in California, including loans to businesses in, un, in high unemployment areas. The CalCap program is scheduled to receive $84 million in funding from the Federal Small Business Lending Act of 2010. This additional funding is expected to help provide with uh, loan portfolio insurance for an additional $1.5 to $2 billion in loans. AB 981 will enable the CalCap program to maximize the new federal funding. This bill has enjoyed, and I do quote here, bipartisan support throughout the process. It's a measure sponsored by our uh, treasurer, uh, Mr. Bill Lockyer, and has no, no opposition. Mr. President, as well as members, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Any objection to the use of our unanimous roll call? Any objection? If not, and seeing and hearing none, it is ayes 37, no zero, the bill is passed. Members, we are looking at file item 136, Senator Price. Senator Price, Senator Curran Price, Sergeant at Arms, thank you. Senator Price, we have file item 136, you're going to pass. File item 139, we will pass. File item 145, Senator Wright's not at his desk. All right. Senator Lowenthal, thank you for your patience, sir. What item do you wish to take up at this time? Item 105. Item 105, thank you. File item 105, Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 815 by Assembly Member Brownlee and Ackling to Instructional Programs and making an appropriation therefore. Thank you, Mr. President. AB 815 would establish the state seal of biliteracy to recognize high school graduates who have attained a high level of proficiency in speaking, reading, and writing in one, of more, in one or more languages in addition to English. The state seal of biliteracy will be designed and awarded by the superintendent of public instruction when students have fulfilled specific criteria. When seniors leave high school with a seal of biliteracy on their diploma, it is a statement of accomplishment for future employers and for college admission. Students need to be prepared academically and linguistically for our 21st century global economy, and being able to communicate in English and one or more languages should be recognized. Thank you, and I ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none? Ah, forgive me, Senator Huff. Unassuming as you are, I simply overlooked you. Senator Huff. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise in support of this bill. Um, the United States has often had a reputation of being isolated, of uh, being single language, and it's time that we change. California leads the way in so many other ways that while you could argue that we ought to have a seal for other accomplishments in education, I think this is a good place to start. Why not recognize those that master more than one language? I ask for your I vote. Further debate or discussion? Further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Lowenthal, you may I close. I urge your aye vote. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist? Aye. aye. Anderson? No. Berryhill? Blakesley? Aye. aye. Calderon? Aye. Canella? Aye. aye. Corbett? Aye. Correa? Aye. aye. De Leon? Desaunier? Aye. aye. Dutton? Emerson, 
I. Evans. I. Fuller. I. Gaines. Hancock. I. Harmon. Hernandez. I. Huff. I. Kehoe. I. Lamalfa. Leno. Ted Lou. I. Carol Lou. I. Lowenthal. I. Negretta McLeod. I. Padilla. I. Pavley. I. Price. I. Rubio. I. Runner. Simidian. I. Steinberg. Strickland. Steinberg I. Strickland. Vargas. I. Walters. Wolk. Wright. Wyland. No. Ye. Ye I. Bear Hill I. Runner I. Wolk I. Call the absent members. De Leon. I. Dutton. Gaines. No. Harmon. I. Lamalfa. Leno. Strickland. Walters. Wright. I 31, no's 3, the bill is passed. Members, we will go next to Senator Blakesley, who will be followed by Senator Hancock, who will be followed by Senator Saulnier. Blakesley, Hancock, DeSaulnier, in that order. Forgive me. Blakesley, DeSaulnier, and Hancock. Blakesley, DeSaulnier, and Hancock. Senator Blakesley, what file item, please? Uh, thank you, President. Uh, the uh, file item is number 93. 93. Item 93. 93 File item 93. Assembly Bill 565 by Assembly Member Monning and Ackling to Conservation. AB 565 facilitates a unique public-private partnership to remove the San Clemente Dam in my district by leveraging federal and private funds with existing state monies. The State California Coastal Conservancy and the Federal National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association have partnered with Cal-Am to fund the removal of this dam. Accelerated erosion of the Carmel River resulted in a significant accumulation of sediment behind the dam. In fact, the reservoir is now 90% filled with sediment and now has no use uh, as a drinking water supply. In addition, due to seismic hazard, this dam potentially could threaten up to 1,500 structures in the uh, downstream floodplain. Uh, and a benefit of removing, a public benefit of removing this dam includes restoration of 25 miles of the Carmel River, which uh, would then allow for spawning and rearing habitat for steelhead trout, a threatened species, uh, without the ability uh, provided to the Coastal Conservancy, the ability to leverage these important federal monies could be lost. The bill is supported by Cal-Am, the Monterey Board of Supervisors, Trout Unlimited. I ask for an I vote. Debate or discussion? debate or discussion, seeing and hearing none. Members, is there any objection to substituting our unanimous roll call on this item? Yes. There is. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist, aye. Anderson, no. Berryhill, aye. Blakesley, aye. Calderon, aye. Canella, aye. Corbett, aye. Correa, aye. De Leon, I. Desaigne, I. Dutton, Emerson, I. Evans, I. Fuller, Gaines, No. Hancock, I. Herman, Hernandez, I. Huff, I. Kehoe, I. Lamalfa, No. Leno, Ted Lou, I. Carol Lou, I. Lowenthal, I. Negretta McLeod, I. Padilla, Aye. I. Pavley, Aye. I. Price, Aye. I. Rubio, Aye. I. Runner, Aye. I. Semidian, I. Steinberg, Aye. I. Strickland, Aye. Vargas, Aye. I. Walters, Wolk, Aye. I. Wright, Wyland, Ye, Ye. I. Wyland. I. Please call the absent members. Dutton, Aye. I. Fuller. Harmon, Leno, Strickland, Walters, Wright. 
Ayes 31, noes 3, the bill is passed. Senator Saulnier, what item do you wish to bring up at this time? File item 101. It is file item 101, members. File item 101, the Secretary will read. Assembly Bill 1149 by Assembly Member Gordon, an act relating to beverage containers and making an appropriation therefore. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this item extends the sunset on California's successful plastic market development program. Uh, it extends it to 2017. Without this extension, the provision of the beverage, this provision of the beverage container recycling ad will sunset actually at the end of 2011. The plastic market, market development program uses surplus redemption funds to make payments of up to $150 per ton to California-based processors and manufacturers that recycle pla empty plastic beverage containers. This fund has generated up to $5 million each year in the last several years to help with California recyclers be able to do uh, our recycling. In spite of these efforts, up to 90% of plastic collected for recycling in California goes to China. Without this, our industry would be at, a, at an even greater disadvantage. Uh, this will help promote jobs and help with environmental concerns. I would ask for your I vote. Is there debate or discussion? Senator Huff. Question to the author. Do you wish to take a question? Or jockey, I should say. Forgive me. Senator DeSaulnier, do you wish to take a question? Uh, I'd be delighted to. Somebody else other than Senator Huff? <laughs> I'd be Huff, happy to. Senator Huff, is your question, or Senator Huff, please proceed. Is this one of the funds that we have swept into the general fund? I don't believe so. I actually think we have not been able to. Good question. <laughs> um, it, it was my recollection that it is, and I, I get yes, concerned. I'm told, I'm told you're correct. We have. Okay, thank you. It, and that is what I have concern about when we have legitimate funds that are established for a purpose, and as soon as they start to show a surplus, rather than lower the cost to consumers, we take the money and then, you know, say we need this renewed. And so uh, for that reason, while I think it's done a good job, I'm going to be voting no. Further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Saulnier, you may close. Uh, even with Senator Huff's concerns, I think we have to address those separately. Uh, if we'd like to generate re new revenue, perhaps we could protect these funds better, but I would respectfully ask for a I vote. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist, I. Anderson, no, Barry Hill, Blakesley, Calderon, I. Canella, I. Corbett, I. Correa, De Leon, I. Desaunier, I. Dutton, no Emerson, no Evans, I. Fuller, I. Gaines, Hancock, I. Harmon, I. Hernandez, I. Huff, no Kehoe, I. Lamalfa, Leno, Ted Lou. I. Carol Lou, I. Lowenthal, I. Negretta McLeod, I. Padilla, Pavley, I. Price, I. Rubio, I. Runner, I. Semidian, I. Steinberg, I. Strickland, I. Vargas, I. Walters, Wolk, I. Wright, Wyland, I ye, ye I, Correa I. Please call the absent members. Barry Hill, I Blakesley, I Gaines, Lamalfa, I Leno, Padilla, Walters, Wright. Eyes thirty-one, nose four. The bill is passed. Senator Desaulnier, do you have another item? Thank you. Then we go now to Senator Hancock. Senator Hancock, what file item? File item 112, Mr. This President. This file item 112. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1424 by Assemblymember Perea and Ackling to Taxation. Thank you, Mr. President. The current budget problems have forced difficult cuts on education, public safety, health and human services, and many other programs that Californians count on. Yet each year, about $6.5 billion in taxes go unpaid. As of May 20th, uh, 
The top 250 delinquent taxpayers owe more than $180 million in personal income tax and business taxes make about another... Senator Hancock, one moment, please. <laughs> Members, we're in the home stretch. If we could ask for your attention, we'll try and wrap things up expeditiously. One moment, please, Senator Hancock. Senator Hancock, please proceed. Thank you, members. Um, AB 1424 would allow a state governmental licensing entity to suspend or refuse to issue, reinstate, reactivate, or renew a license if the licensee's name is included on the Franchise Tax Board and the State Board of Equalization's top 500 tax delinquent lists. Um, members, most Californians pay their taxes not to take this step to hold all taxpayers accountable deprives the state of needed money at this time to keep our public institutions solvent and their doors open. There is a hardship clause uh, and a way of uh, scheduling repayments over a period of time uh, that are built into this bill, and I would ask for your aye vote. Senator LaMalfa. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise in opposition. We've seen today legislation to pay for tattoo removal, which ostensibly was supposed to help make it easier for certain people to be employed. There's an argument for that. We've seen legislation here to loosen up who can receive or keep their driver's licenses after DUIs with the uh, breathalyzer. That's been loosened up a little bit through that legislation. Now we want to go in the other direction to hurt jobs, to hurt, for, hurt people by taking away their licenses to enforce taxes. There's got to be other ways to go after the taxes without taking away licenses for people that employ other people and are part of the economy here. So we're trying to preserve jobs, their ability to get jobs with the tattoo removal, with allowing people to get to work that have had DUIs, yet we're attacking those that provide jobs by taking away their licenses. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I ask your no vote. Any additional debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Hancock, you may close. Thank you. These are taxes that are owed to the state of California and are paid by other businesses and taxpayers. Um, these are the 500 uh, companies or individuals with the largest delinquencies. There are hardship clauses built in. This is a sensible move for the state at this time, and I would ask for your aye vote. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist, aye. aye. Anderson, aye. no. Berryhill, no. Blakesley, no. no. Calderon, aye. aye. Canella, aye. no. Corbett, aye. aye. Correa, aye. no. De Leon, aye. aye. Desaunier, aye. aye. Dutton, aye. no. Emerson, aye. no. Evans, aye. aye. Fuller, aye. no. Gaines, aye. no. Hancock, aye. aye. Harmon, aye. no. Hernandez, aye. aye. Huff. No Kehoe, I Lamalfa, no Leno, Ted Lou, Carol Lou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, no Simidian, I Steinberg, Strickland, Steinberg, I Strickland. Steinberg, I, Strickland, no. Vargas, Walters, Wolk, I, Wright, Wyland, no. Ye. Eyes 19, nose 15. Senator Hancock, do you wish to move a call? Pardon? Ted Lou, I. Members, one moment, please, on a procedural matter. Oops. The roll was called. I did ask Senator Hancock if she would like to place the measure on call. Before she could answer, Senator Ted Lieu attempted to add an aye vote. Because the roll was called, Senator Ted Lieu's vote will not be allowed. I will go back now to Senator Hancock and say, Senator, do you wish to place the measure on call? 
Could we call the could absent you, members could, one more members, time? Members, if you could simply say yes to the question, Senator, I think we can solve the problem. May we place the measure on call, Senator? Oh, yes. Thank you. Senator, do you wish to lift the call on that item? Um, yes. We'd like to lift the call on the last item, members. Please lift the call on file item 112. Thank you, Senator Hancock. Call the absent members. Leno. Ted Lieu. Aye. Vargas. Aye. Aye. Walters. Wright. Yee. Ayes 21, noes 15, the bill is passed. Thank you, uh, members. Thank you, and I'd like to request immediate transmittal to the Assembly. We have a request for immediate transmittal on that item. Is there any objection? Is there any objection? There is an objection. One moment, please. There is objection. Immediate transmittal is denied. Thank you. At the point where it's time to lift the call on the items that remain on call, could we have a call list, please, from the desk? Thank you. Members, if I could have your attention, please. We have a half dozen items that are on call. We're going to begin by lifting the call on file item 15. Members, this is Senator Correa's SB 488. It is a 27-vote bill. Mr. Secretary, please lift the call and call the absent members on file item 15. Barry Hill, Emerson, Gaines, Harmon, Walters, Wyland. Barry Hill, Emerson, Gaines, Harmon, Walters, Wyland. Senator Correa asks that we replace the call. Members, that takes us to file item 83. This is file item 83. Will the secretary please lift the call and call the absent members? Correa, Harmon, Carol Lou, I, Negretta McLeod, Rubio, Steinberg, I, Walters, Wright. Harmon, no. Call the absent members. Correa, Negretta McLeod, Rubio, Walters, right. Senator Padilla, it is eyes 20, noes 15. The measure fails. Request for reconsideration without objection. Reconsideration is granted. Eyes 36, no zero on the request for reconsideration, members. That, that takes us to file item 91. Mr. Secretary, please lift the call. And call the absent members. Barry Hill, Blakesley, Calderon, Can No, Canella, Correa, Emerson, Fuller, Gaines, Harmon, Hernandez, Huff, Lamalfa, Leno, Ted Lou. Carol Lou, Price, Rubio, No, Runner, Steinberg, I, Strickland, Walters, Wright. Members, it is eyes 15, noes 6. The measure fails. Reconsideration is requested by Senator de Saulnier. Without objection, reconsideration will be granted. Seeing and hearing no no objection. Reconsideration is granted. Eyes 36, noes 0. Reconsideration is granted. File item 77. Mr. Secretary, please lift the call and call the absent members. Hernandez, Padilla, Rubio, Vargas, 
Walters, Wolk, Wright, Yee. Call the absent members. Hernandez, Padilla, Rubio, Vargas, Walters, Wolk, Wright, Yee. Eyes 16, nose 16, the measure fails. Senator Evans requests reconsideration. Without objection, reconsideration will be granted. Is there any objection? Hearing and seeing none. Reconsideration is granted. Eyes 36, nose 0. Members, we are now at file item 102. We are lifting the call on file item 102. Mr. Secretary, please lift the call and call the absent members. Correa, Dutton, no, Hancock, I, Leno, Steinberg, I, Walters, Wright. Call the absent members. Correa, I, Leno, Walters, Wright. Eyes 23, nose 14, the bill is passed. Members, that takes us to file item 94. Mr. Secretary, please lift the call and call the absent members. Correa, Leno, Semidian, I, I, Steinberg, I, I Walters, Wright. Eyes 22, noes 14, the bill is passed. And file item 96, Mr. Secretary, please lift the call and call the absent members. Leno, Steinberg, I, I Walters, Wolk, Wright, Yi. Call the absent members. Yi, I, Leno, Walters, Wolk, Wright. Rubio, no to I. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Leno, Walters, Wolk, Wright. Correa, no to I. Eyes 21, nose 15, the bill is passed. Members, I believe that completes all of the items that we have on call. One moment while we check with the desk. Members, we do have the one measure that Senator Correa has placed on call. We're going to lift the call on that for a final time. Senator Correa, please lift the call. This is file item 15. It is a 27-vote bill. Call the absent members. Berryhill, Emerson, Gaines, Harmon, Walters, Wyland. Eyes 26, nose 8, the measure fails. All right, members, I think that does complete all of the items we have on call. Members, members, could I have your attention, please? Senator Correa has asked for reconsideration on the item. The desk informs me, however, that that is the second time the measure has failed on the floor. Senate Rule 43 provides that once a measure has failed twice, it may not be granted reconsideration, and for that reason, the request for reconsideration must be denied. Request for reconsideration is denied. That takes care of all of our items on call, and we will go back to motions and resolutions to see if there are items on motions and resolutions. Members, are there any items under motions and resolutions? Members, one motion, one moment, please, under motions and resolutions. <laughs> Members, we have measures that are withdrawn and re-referred to committee. Without objection, AB 1069 will be withdrawn from the committee for third reading and re-referred to the Committee on Rules. AB 170, is there any objection? No. AB 172 will be withdrawn from the Committee on Third Reading and re-referred to the Committee on Rules. 
AB 1391 will be withdrawn from third reading and re-referred to the Committee on Rules. AB 506 will be withdrawn from third reading and re-referred to the Committee on Rules. AB 1150 will be withdrawn from the third reading and re-referred to the Committee on Rules. And AB 1059 will be withdrawn from third reading and re-referred to the Committee on Rules. Without objection, AB 1418 will be withdrawn from the Committee on Rules and re-referred to third reading. Without objection, so ordered. Members, without objection and pursuant to Joint Rule 33.1, Joint Rule 61A12 will be suspended to allow the Business and Professions Committee to hear and report Assembly Joint Resolution 15. This request has been approved by the Rules Committee. Without objection, so ordered. Members, without objection, Joint Rule 62A will be suspended for the Business and Professions Committee to meet and hear AJR 15 without the four-day notice in the daily file. Without objection, it is so ordered. Members, under motions and resolutions, without objection, Senate Rule 29.3B will be suspended for Assembly Bills 931, 724, 172, and 1059. Is there any objection? There is. Then, members, we will have a roll call vote. An aye vote allows for the suspension of the rules. A no vote is in opposition to the suspension of the rules. Senator Corbett is asking for an aye vote. Senator Dutton is asking for a no vote. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? Barry, no. Berryhill? No. Blakesley? No, Calderon. Aye, Canella. No, Corbett. Aye, Correa. Aye, De Leon. Aye, Desaunier. Aye, Dutton. No, Emerson. No, Evans. Aye, Fuller. No, Gaines. No, Hancock. Aye, Herman. No, Hernandez. Aye, Huff. No, Kehoe. Aye, Lamalfa. No, Leno, Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, Price, I Rubio, I Runner, No Semidian, I Steinberg, I Strickland, No Vargas, I Walters, Wolk. I write Wyland. No ye. Eyes 21, nose 14. The rules are suspended. Members, one other item under motions and resolutions. Without objection, Senate Rule 29.3B will be suspended for Assembly Concurrent Resolutions 70 and 75. Is there any objection? Without objection, so ordered. Members, I believe that completes the business under motions and resolutions. Are there any other items under motions and resolutions? If not, then there is no other business. Senator Steinberg, and the desk is clear. Senator Dutton has something. Forgive me. Senator Dutton, do you wish to be recognized at this time? Yeah, I have an purpose, announcement. Senator? We've got a JLAC uh, meeting tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Uh, it's in uh, room uh, 4202. Thank you for that announcement, sir. I believe that is our last item of business. Senator Steinberg, if there is no other business, the desk is clear. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, just to give members a status report, today we completed 81 bills. We have an, uh, approximately 80 assembly bills left and about 80 Senate bills coming back to the Senate. That's approximate. Which means that uh, while we end at 5.40 today and began at 10 with some interruptions, we had a productive day, I would anticipate tomorrow to make sure that we're not caught on that last day here that we're going to work late tomorrow uh, and, and uh, try to clear as much of it as possible and leave you know, the, maybe the larger items or the items that still need to be worked out uh, for Friday. 
all with the anticipation of trying to end session at a reasonable hour on Friday if we can and end the session. So tomorrow we'll convene at 10 o'clock and I thank everybody for their hard work and cooperation. We're on our way to a good ending. Thanks. Senator Steinberg, before members leave the chambers, could we confirm with your office that the Budget Committee is still expected to meet tomorrow morning at 9.30, which was the earlier announcement? Yes, 9.30 and where? In room 4203. Thank you, Senator Steinberg, for that confirmation. Then, members, without objection, the Senate will adjourn immediately. We will reconvene tomorrow, Thursday, at 10 a.m. Without objection, we are adjourned.